Hi folks and welcome to today's video, low back disc herniation, questions to ask your physio. Now I do produce a lot of great content for those folks out there suffering with low back conditions such as herniated discs, bulging discs, sciatic nerve pain, stenosis, etc. If that's you, hit that subscribe button. You'll help yourself and many, many other people around this world get notified of some great content which is going to get them back on the road to recovery. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So folks, today I want to talk about six questions you can ask your physiotherapist, your rehabilitation specialist, perhaps your chiropractor, um, that will help you on the road to recovery. I think these are very important questions that people should ask their healthcare practitioner because they want to make sure they get the proper care, the best care to get them back on that road to recovery. Now, we do have a slightly different format today. I'm at my dining table, got my library behind me, got my greenery here as well. I do like my house plants, keeps the oxygen flowing in this home. Now, number one question that I would tell people uh, to ask their specialist is, have you had a lower back problem, herniated disc, bulging disc? Now, it's not necessary for every healthcare practitioner to have had the issues that their people have coming to them. However, Myself, I have had a herniated disc, bulging disc, many, many issues, many injuries, of course, many different activities and sports, and it helps me relate to those people, helps me to create empathy with those people, and I can share their struggle, because I've been there myself. Now, don't get me wrong, as I said, not every physio will have had issues, injuries, etc. They will have the knowledge to deal with your issues, but it is nice to know sometimes that the person you're working with has had that issue, they know where you're coming from, they know the struggles, emotional, frustration, et cetera, that, are going to, that you can go through, like I did myself, and the interaction can be much more smooth, can be more relatable. So it's not necessary that your physio rehab person has been through the same as what you've been, but they have had to have had lots of experience of working with people with these issues, so they know what issues may come up and how they can deal with them in your particular case. Now, number two, is ask them, will I be given homework to do? Now, I talk about this quite a lot. Um, you can have the best physiotherapist in the world, you're going there three, four hours a week, but if you're not given stuff to do at home and you follow through, I'll come on to that in a second, then it's going not going to work 100% because you can undo all the good work that's done in that time of your physiotherapy by lifting incorrectly at home, by not doing the homework you were given, um, you're not accountable for the homework you were given. Um, you know, for example, I give most of my clients a lot of homework to do. They're working on their own exercises, stretches, and actually one of my clients sent me a picture yesterday. It's just gonna pop up on the screen for you. Um, this is the client and his son. They're doing some relaxation and some decompression stretching there. He just uh, sent a video, uh, a picture over to me uh, to show that he was doing his homework. And I asked my clients to send me videos send me pictures, they've got records to keep, programs to keep, they've got to input their details there. So I know they're doing the homework, I know they're on that road to recovery. So it's very important that you ask them, will I be given homework to do? Because you're actively looking to do the work, you're willing to do the work, and I'm sure, yes, they will give you work to do at home. That's one of the underpinnings of this type of injury. It's very often taken a long time to get to that injury state. Therefore, to get back to a healed state, it does take a cumulative load, which means you're doing activities every day which will put you on that path. So number two, ask about being given homework, stuff to do at home. Number three, often ask them as well, you may have only had 12 sessions prescribed, depending on where you are in the world, on your healthcare provider, your health system, UK, Australia, etc. cetera. Um, what happens after the physio is over? Will I be given more exercises to do? Is there a transition? You know, many people are left, and many of my clients have come to me after failed physio, or they've been to physio, they've gone back to their activities, they weren't strong enough for it, so they come to me, and then I've given them the proper progressive style of recovery, where we do one block, then the next block, and the next block, and I'm getting them back to that specific level they need to be, be it tennis, golf, um, just general activity, playing with the kids, picking up the kids, etc. So it's good to know that when physio stops, there is something else to keep you going. Um, one of my ladies, uh, sadly, I was very surprised about this, although not surprised on one side, was given an app 
So nobody actually instructed her on any exercises. She was prescribed a physio app and told to follow a certain set of exercises. No guidance, no nothing. And of course, when that was over, what do you do then? And she was left helpless and she came to me quite recently and she's now working with me successfully at her own speed. So number three, definitely ask them what happens after the physio. How long is it gonna go on for, okay? And what is the next steps after I'm done? Number four, again, very important. Will my program be individualized? Now, again, this is not a fault of the physios themselves. It's very often a fault of the system that they're in. They may have to see many, many people on that day. The physiotherapist clinic could be run as a pure business, profit-making entity. Therefore, they are supposed to issue generic type programs for everyone who's got disc herniation, sciatica, shoulder, rotator cuff problem, knee meniscus tear, etc. For 80% of people, that will most likely work and get them to where they are managing their pain, managing their issue. However, there are many, many people that do need an individualized approach. Now, with low back pain rehabilitation, there is a set standard, if you will, of care um, that is prescribed, be it stretching, mobility, decompression work, strengthening work, etc. And many people just take a few things from that and that's what the person is given because it is time, it's money, it's profit for that business. However, depending on your training maturation, what level you are currently at, if you're excessively weak, maybe a little bit older, you can't get down on the floor so well, some of the exercises you won't be able to do. And I've had many clients come to me and say to me, Colin, they gave me this and I couldn't do it. It actually made things worse. So you have to, in my case, I've had to individualize people's programs by making the exercise that little bit easier and explaining to people, this is your super beginner phase. This is how you make it a little bit harder. This is how you can progress it. This is how the next level to make yourself stronger, etc. If it's not broken down and made tailored for you, then you're gonna be getting a cookie cutter program from the, the literature, from the paper, from the books. I've got a lot of books here behind me, from the, the classic rehabilitation books. And sometimes it might not work for you. So do ask them. Will it be individualized? You know, I, I have this issue with my knee, I can't get on the ground. I have this issue with, you know, uh, my shoulder, I can't do this exercise. Ask them, okay, because if they're good physios, it's a good clinic, they should adapt it. They should always be adapted to the individual's ability at the time, and then you can progress it from there, okay? So make sure you do ask them questions. Now, coming on from that, number six, what happens if you're given something to do in physio and your pain gets worse, like you have actually been hurt, okay? You gotta make sure you tell the physio. You gotta ask them, hey, look, if I don't feel comfortable doing this, will you give me a replacement? Because I've had clients come to me who have been given exercises, stretches, and the physio has just said, no, you just need to do it. You just need to do it. Very authoritative, you just need to do it. Sometimes, forgive the expression, there's more than one way to skin a cat, okay? We all, most of us know that expression. There's multiple exercises you can use to achieve the goal you're seeking to achieve. If somebody doesn't feel comfortable with the exercise, if they feel that it is actually hurting them, it's making the pain worse, then as a professional uh, practitioner, as a rehabilitation specialist, you should look at that, change it, adapt it for the person. So if you do feel worse from your exercises, speak up, okay? Say something to the physio, they should adapt it for your level, okay? That's very, very important that you are getting the requested care that you want and you're not getting worse. As I've said before, physio, you should be, you know, there'll be an improvement. Quite often there's a little bit of where you feel a bit tired, maybe more sore because that's just your body waking up again and it steps up when you get stronger and you get this sort of step up fashion, okay? Physio shouldn't be making you worse. If it is, speak up, say something. Perhaps you can work with another physio in the clinic. Perhaps you, your provider can provide another um, physio clinic that you can go to, okay? If I have clients who have some small issue, like, oh, say this didn't feel right, Colin, they can text me on WhatsApp, they can text me over Messenger, they can speak up in the Facebook group. We, I usually ask for a video first, have a look at it to make sure the technique is correct. <clears throat> if the technique is good, but it's still causing a problem, then, okay, I need to rethink the strategy. We change the exercise, I replace. I do that quite often for people. I want them to feel comfortable and I want them to do the work so they get the results we're looking for. Now, 
Number six, this is actually uh, quite a big one, is you want to ask them, how will you make me accountable? Okay, because <laughs> as humans, we tend to, when we leave our place of work or we leave our, our place of sport, we tend not to do anything else. We go to physio, we come home, we don't do anything else. How are we going to be accountable for the information, for the work that's been given to us? Okay. Um, as an example, I'm going to flash a couple things up on the screen here. When I give my clients work to do, they have a check-in sheet, which is going to flash up there. It's just a PDF that they fill every week. They send to me so I could go over what they've been doing, their sleep, etc. If they've done the exercise, if they missed anything, I'll get them to send videos, as I said before, send me pictures of their stretches. Um, they've got the workouts that they fill in. They're supposed to take a photograph of that, put in the details. Okay, I want them to be doing the work and obviously they, they pay me for, for you know, providing this service. And I want them to get the best, I want them to get the best value for money that they're paying. So I want to make sure they do the work. If they don't do the work, you're not going to get the results. So again, quite often, some of the physiotherapy clinics, they will give you a sheet to fill out and you, you fill in um, the weight you lifted, the repetitions you did, how long you held the plank exercise for, if you're doing, you know, for, for time. They will review that, then they know what changes to make. So they're making, making you accountable to them. Perhaps some of them will say, look, take some videos of you doing the exercise and then show me when you come in the following week, all right? It's forcing you to do the work. And that's super important if you want to get results, all right? So these are just six of very important, I think, questions that you should ask your physiotherapist, rehab specialist, chiropractor, etc., whoever it is you're seeing for your problem, because it's some of the top six that I believe in and I want to, my own clients, make sure they're following these protocols and for those folks out there who are having these own issues, you've got your own physiotherapy, you're going to a rehab specialist, please ask those questions, okay? It is super, super important. Okay, guys, listen, um, if you yourself that are having problems with your physio, you're having problems with your lower back issues, whatever, feel free to hit me up in the comment section down below, okay? If you look at all the comments here, I do answer all people's questions, comments. I try to help as many people as possible with their low back problems. It is a worldwide issue that we're dealing with right now and it will affect about 80% of us uh, the, during the course of our lifetime. So I do try to help as many people as possible as I can. If you're not comfortable putting your comments down below, then feel free to send me an email. My email address is down in the description as well. All right, guys, listen, please like and share this video. We want to get the algorithm working to get this news out there to as many people as possible to help as many people who are suffering from back pain issues. So please like, share, and of course, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.